Okay, so welcome and good morning. My name is Jennifer Bento Pinion. I'm here at MIFA on the college planning team uh, as program manager for MIFA Pathway. So today we're going to take about 45 minutes or so and go through the features of the student portal of our student view. Uh, we currently have two, two different views. We have the login for the student and we have the login for the educator or the counselor. So those are our, our different portals. So today we're, gonna, we're going to focus on what the student sees when they create an account and have access to Meet for Pathway. So just to give a little a little background on, on MIFA Pathway and what it's all about. Uh, MIFA Pathway is a complete college and career planning resource for students, educators, and education policymakers across the Commonwealth. It's offered to all middle and high schools in Massachusetts, free of cost by the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority. So MIFA Pathway plays a key role in the Commonwealth's efforts around college and career readiness and success by increasing access to information about higher education and career opportunities for all types of students. So Pathway provides access to academic and professional success to learners in grades 6 through 12 across the Commonwealth by setting each student on a path to college and career success. So rather than a one-size-fits-all approach to future planning, Pathway is tailored to meet the needs of the Commonwealth's diverse student and workforce populations by offering comprehensive tools in one easily accessible website. So Pathway offers interactive planning, college and career search tools, and provides comprehensive data on student academic readiness and success, as well as it offers communication tools and centralized student tracking. So important Imported student data is the basis of the platform, and this leads to its powerful reporting capabilities for an educator, which incorporates both qualified student data and student preferences in one location. So when a school signs an agreement, we work with the designated data manager to upload the, the DESI file and import it directly into the pathway system, which creates a secure community for the school, where only users from that school can access the community. That said, regardless of if a school is an affiliate school, students can create an account in Pathway and use the same exact features uh, that, that an affiliate school is privy to. So uh, let's see here. So let's, um, let's get started. We have, a, this is our main landing page here, meetthepathway.org. And the registration process for a student is very, very simple. And I didn't mention that uh, I'm going to, I'll put up my contact slide at the end of the webinar for anyone who wants to reach out with any questions or comments. So I'll, I'll keep everyone on mute throughout the webinar. And then at the end, I'll have my, um, my contact information. Okay, so this is the main landing page, mefapathway.org. When a student goes in, wants to create their account for the first time, they just click on I am a student. It brings them to this student login page. They are a first time user, so they click register here. And this process takes maybe two minutes. Um, I've worked with students, you know, obviously some students work a little quicker than others, but uh, I've worked with many students in the classroom and it, you know, Within about two minutes, everyone has their, their account created. So the student would put in a first name, a last name, their date of birth. I'm just doing this quickly. So uh, let's see, 2002. And then they select the city or town that the school is in. Let's just use Acton as an example. Now, the drop-down box here will have all of the, the schools that are offered within a particular town. So we'll just pick the high school here and then the student gets on to the next page. So there are three registration pages. The second page, the student would put in their address, the, the city, the zip code, and then their year of graduation. So that's an important piece and it's a required field because that, that in turn will um, show the dashboard page which is appropriate for that grade school level. So, they click register, they get on to the third page, which is where they create a username, a password, they put in 
an email address. They do have to have an email address and they create two security questions. So the security questions in the email address are if and when the student uh, needs to reset their password. So this is a pretty common problem. I say problem. Uh, it's a it's I guess an issue that that schools have with uh, students not remembering their password. So this is an easy way the, the student can can reset it on their own. So a lot of schools don't allow students to have access to their personal email address in this on the school in this within the school. So that's why we have the two security questions that they can um, reset their password by. All right. So once they they work through that third page, then they will be launched into the website. So this is my test account that I'm going to log into. So I put, and the student would come in, they'd put their username, their password, and they click submit. Now, at, when the student first logs in for the very first time, they will see this overview page. So this prompts a student to start adding information into their profile, which is one of the very first activities that we suggest students to do. But once, the, after the first login, they will automatically be brought to their dashboard when they log in. So the dashboard is, offers the appropriate activities per grade level. So as you can see here, my test account, the student is in grade 12. So this, a grade 12 student would see different suggested activities than a grade nine student. So I'll just scroll down here to show you. So these are all of the activities that we suggest that the student in a grade 12 would work through. So this may be different for some grade 12 students. You know, for example, if there's a, student, a grade 12 student that isn't uh, planning on going to college, they wouldn't be finalizing their college list. Maybe they'd be more focusing on refining their career list. But these, um, these are opportunities that we uh, suggest for to grade 12 students. So it offers progress, showing progress, last activity, uh, and then it gives a, a progress bar here of what of the activities that the student has been working on. So it al also gives the student, um, it's an, an intuitive way for the student to know which activity they may jump into next. All right. So I will go through the profile piece here first to show you how that works. So the student, we really suggest start working on their profile details in grade nine. All of the information that feeds in, that the student adds into their profile will feed into a resume builder. So for a student that maybe in, just as an example, at the beginning of their senior year, starting up to apply to schools, they may need a resume for college applications. And if they started this profile back in grade nine, they won't have to scramble to remember all of the great activities and honors and clubs and community service that they've done over the past couple of years. So it's important that they, the student gets working on this profile piece in grade nine. So personal information is the first sub page that we see here. All these pages are editable, so if, any, if the student wants to add or edit anything within these pages, they can do so. The next tab here is the school. So when the student creates their account and they have imported their school, that will, that will show as their currently attended school. If the student wants to add a school that they previously attended, they can do so. If they have, um, if they're working on any college coursework or have any to add in there, they can do, do that on this page as well. So that's under the school tab. Activities, this is where the student will add any uh, clubs, sports, any activities that they've been involved with. Um, I'll just show you how easy it is to add. The student just clicks add new. They select the type of activity. So there's a very long list of activities that they can select and if they don't do not find the activity that they would like to add, they can just click other and then type it in. So let's just use, let's see, let's just select research here as an activity. Maybe they are involved in grades 11 and 12 all year round. So as you can see, it's very simple to add information. Do they plan to continue at college? They can add details if they like, a description. And once they complete this page, they click save. 
once it's saved, it is then added to this main activities page. So as you can see here, the student has added many activities to this page. And keep in mind, this is my test account too, so I have a lot of people adding different items in here. <laughs> All right, honors and awards. This is where the student can add any type of, you know, honor roll. Uh, any, you know, they could add a uh, an art award that they received, for example. Um, works the same way. They add the information on the page and then click save. Skills and strengths, this is where the student can actually select from a list here. They can, so let's see, let's take off problem solving, add teamwork, we're gonna save that. So now it appears on that, on that main list. All right, and then employment, same, works the same way. So when you're working with your student, you wanna make certain that they are thinking about not only activities and clubs and whatever they're doing inside of school but also outside of school and on the weekends. So this is a really great way to, to start building out that, that resume. So once they start working on the details of their profile, let's go over to the resume builder here and we can see, just scroll down slowly here, we can see all of the additions from the profile pages. So as you can see honors, activities, Etc. So now, if a student would like to create a draft of a resume, they can add an objective here. So they can type in their objective right on the top, and then they can select what they would like to appear on a particular resume, or deselect rather. So if they don't want the tree department to appear on this particular resume, they just uncheck that box. You know, maybe they don't want all of these activities. So they just deselect, and then, like I said, they could add an objective if they like, and then they save it. They, when they click save, they can then give this a title. So let's just call, let's just, I like to just put the date. So I'm just, today's the 13th, we're clicking save. And now what happens is a saved resume will appear on this saved resumes list. So we have, as you can see, a number of saved resumes. So the student can, can go back and view or edit a particular resume. So let's just check this one out here. I just clicked on this resume that was created back in October and there was not an objective added to this, but you can see what the format looks like. So it's very tidy nice looking. This is actually the classic resume style, whereas we can switch it up to modern if we like. So it looks a little bit different. And then from here, the student can download as a PDF or download and or download as a Word doc. So obviously, if they're downloading as a Word doc, they can then edit from there, change the font, change the order, whatever they'd like to do. So this is a really great way for the student to in, in one spot, save all of the great things that they're doing um, inside and outside of school and build that into a, a, a tidy resume to, and have access to it at any time. All right, so moving along, we're going to next look at our Discover Careers feature here. So most of the, uh, the main pages here have overview pages. So this overview page will link you out to the career page and the career search. And then most oftentimes the overview pages have external um, things that you can check out and, and different um, little tidbits at the bottom. So we have three assessments within MIFA pathway. So we have what are your interests, what are your work values, and what are your skills. So the interests and the values assessments directly tie into the career search. So let's look at the interest inventory. So this is based off of the Holland Codes. There are 30 activities that the student will rate from I hate it to I love it. So they can, it normally takes, I would say, you know, depending on, you know, depending on the student, how much they think about, you know, what they're, what they're rating, 
uh, maybe maybe 10 minutes in, in a classroom. So the student can either reset their previous if they've taken the if they've taken the assessment previously they can either reset that or they can access the results that they that they received um, on a on a previous test now on the educator side in the in the counselor portal the educator can, will have the um, ability to see up to three groupings of the results of the student so that's great for the educator to be able to assess trends and differences over the course of you know maybe a couple of years. So we're just going to look at the previous results so I won't bring you through the entire 30 activities. Uh, so I'm just going to click on previous results to show you what it looks like when the student has completed the assessment. And they do have to complete the assessment in order to get results. They can't stop in the middle and, 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 and get results. They have to get to the end and save their results. So this student has their top three their top three interests results are at, are here. So artistic, social, and enterprising. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you see that we have a summary of each of the six potentials. So that's kind of interesting for students to read. And then from here, the student can say, "All right, well, I'm, I want to see the associated careers with the social result." So they just click on that little tab there. And it brings them to a nice list of careers associated with that social result. So from here, the student can say, hmm, all right, well, I'm kind of interested in um, looking at dental hygiene, being a dental hygienist. So at the top of the details page, we have some general information. And then as we scroll down, we get into more of the details. So we have daily tasks, we have work activities. Um, the student can look at more careers like this if they want. They can click on any of these. Careers will bring them to a detailed career page of each of those. And as we scroll down, we have preparation, uh, prof prof professional qualifications, knowledge that may be required for this particular career, and then at the very bottom, how does this career match to you? So we'll see here that this student has results from their interests and values inventory. And we're looking at how do their results match up with the occupation characteristics. So as we can see here, this student matches up on the social piece. And then with the values match has a match with the independence piece. So it may be a decent matchup for this student. So as we scroll back up here, if the student would like to save this particular career to their careers list, they may do so. So and I just should mention that all of the information on the careers comes from ONET. And this is updated um, with new information every year. So all right, so now we've added dental hygienist to our careers list. So let's just look at what that looks like here on the on this careers list page. So this student has added 38 careers to their list. You can see them all here. And then once they've favorited a particular career, that's then on their favorites list. And the favorites list, we can access that not only on the career list page, but also on the student's digital portfolio. So I'll just show you that since I mentioned it. The digital portfolio is sort of a repository of all of the great things a student has been working on within the site. This page is, uh, you can print it out. So just to show you here, the activities on the left-hand side come direct, are fed directly from that profile page. So that's, those, are, those automatically feed in. The student can add subjects. They can add interests. Just to show you what this looks like, if we click Edit, it provides a list, and the student can add or take away whatever they'd like to here. I'm going to save it. And on the left, on the right hand side, we have um, colleges that have been favorited and careers that have been favorited. So as you can see, we have, as I showed you just on that last page, the, the careers that the student has favorited appear here. And then as we scroll down, we have the student's top, the most recent top three results from their interest assessment and their work values assessment.
And then we have this learning styles inventory. So if the student would, if they want to take that learning styles inventory, they just click, they, the student has already taken it, but they can click retake test. And this will bring them to an external website where they take that assessment and then they can input their, their top learning style to, on this page here. So the student adds, can add their, edit their skills, you know, so that would come from that, that skills inventory. And that's on, on this digital portfolio page. And then honors and awards comes from the profile page, and then they have a direct link to their resume. So again, this is a great way to, for students to take a quick glimpse of what they're working on within the site, and they can download this and save this. And also, these different areas are viewable on the educator side in the counselor portal. All right, so getting back to the Discover Careers page, we have the, um, the assessments, which I showed you. So we have, we, I, we went into detail on the interests assessment. The work values is, is a different format. They drag and drop. So, or they actually they just click, sorry, they click on the, um, they click on the, on the plus to, to, so I make use of my abilities. Maybe that's um, a fairly important thing in the workplace. I can try out my own ideas. Maybe they don't want to drop that here. Um, they can only add four of these values into each particular box. So if they want to move them around, they can do that after they get them filled, they can move them around. So then they click save and then they will see their top three values results. So the career search page directly ties the results of those assessments into the search. So this is, there's so many different options and ways that students can start exploring and discovering careers within the site. And it's just a fun activity, especially in the younger grade levels, because there's so many different careers that they can read about and learn about. So just to give you a, just a quick uh, example of how this works. Uh, so we have education level at the top going, different tabs going across the top here. So just for example, if a student it knows that they would like to go into a vocational training or a two-year degree, they just click on that and we have a, already have a filtered list, 251 careers. So from here, if the student says, all right, well, I've taken that interest assessment, I want to, I want to connect my top three results to this, this filter, I click choose my interest, and then their top, the student's top three results are automatically checked off with a list of corresponding a list with a list of corresponding careers. Now, if we want to filter further and use the values. As well, I clicked use my values, and now we have the top three values results that have been checked off. So, and our careers list has narrowed down further. So from here, the student can say, all right, well, I want to, let's see, I want to see what a hydroelectric production manager does. Click on that. They can see the, the, the detailed careers page. All right. So maybe we want to save this. This looks interesting. So so many so many ways students can start to, uh, like I said, explore and discover careers. And then from there, once they they find a path, they can start uh, deciding what they want to take for college for excuse me for high school courses, and then really start planning out their um, post secondary. Um, you know, what they're going to do after after high school. So in addition, a student can save a particular search. So if they want to save the search that we just did here with all of these filters, they just click Save Search, name the search, name it, save it. And then once they do that, it's it appears on this Save Search list, and they can access any of these Save Searches from here. All right. Moving on. Build career plan. So on this page, we have our goals and strategies feature, 
which may be my favorite activity in this um, in our platform here because I, I think it's it really gets students thinking about both short and long term goals and creating strategies of how am I going to reach how am I going to reach these goals. So the student can add up to three career, three personal and three academic goals. So very simple to add. We just click add goal and they fill out the corresponding information within the box. They click save and once they click save, it then appears on that main goals and strategies page. Now, the, the educator on their end can also view the goals and strategies of the student. So this is also important for, you know, maybe the ed educator brings up this particular student's goals and strategies before they have a meeting with them, and that's a great discussion. All right. So we are in, um, we're creating a course planner, which is in development and isn't available quite yet, uh, but we're really excited to have this uh, at, at some point, probably fairly soon. Uh, so the course planner would allow the students to select select courses from a course catalog that's developed from by the school. So um, more to come on that. All right, search for colleges. This is a great tool for students to use when they start thinking about colleges. So Again, overview page has some further information on it. Uh, I'm going to sh show you how the, the main college search page works. So we have just under 4,000 two and four year schools. We also have um, vocational programs that are that searchable. All of the information on the schools comes from the Peterson's database. So the colleges provide Peterson's the information and then Peterson's provides it to us. So if you find a school that has um, information that might from 2017 say, it will be indicated and you just have to know that, that the school hadn't sent their updated info to Peterson's. So. We don't have a lot of control over that, but we do make note of it so you are aware. And if that's the case, the, the recommendation is just to go to the college's, you know, their actual website and um, look for the most updated information. All right, so let's do a search here. So as you can see on the left-hand side, there are many different pieces of criteria that you can add to create a search. So let's start off with region. So let's click Northeast. Maybe we want to look at all of the schools in the Northeast. If you wanted just to select a handful of schools from the Northeast, you could do that. But I'm going to keep I'm going to keep them all checked off. And as you can see now, my the number of schools that are on the list went down from just under 4,000 to 851. All right, let's scroll down here. I'm going to say, all right, my I want to be in an in an urban setting. And see our, our number went down here. And then I want to look at schools that have a moderately difficult admission. So now, just with those couple of filters, we're down to 86 schools. So maybe a student wants to add in, you know, maybe they want to add in an area of study. Maybe they're looking for a, a biology program. Let's see what that brings us. Did I did I get it in there? All right, let's see. Let's let's check that out. All right, and then we have to select a, a major or a focus. Let's just go for biochemistry here. See what we get. All right, so now we're down to 23. So we have the schools here. So let's just let's look at Clark just as an example. So we're going to click on Clark, and the, the details page of the colleges look similar to that of the career page. So we have general information on the top. And as you can see, Clark, it's very tiny, sorry, but uh, Clark was good and they sent their updated information to Peterson. So this is as of the 2019 academic year. This is their tuition. And then as we scroll down, we'll get 
quite a bit of inf information and details about the schools. So we have admissions information, tuition and fees. Sorry if I'm going fast, but you guys can um, get in and look at this too on your own. Um, campus life, athletics, and then as we get to the very bottom, we have contact information. So a, a link to the school's website and their admissions website. So if Clark University is a school that a student wants to save to their list, they just click save to list, and then they start creating that college list. So the college list here, the student has 23 colleges on their list, four of which are favorited. And again, the favorited colleges appear on that digital portfolio. So maybe the student has quite an extensive college list, maybe they're sophomore, maybe they're beginning of their junior year, but as their junior year you know, comes to a close, and especially as they start their senior year, they will certainly have schools on their list that they will apply to. And a great way to help them suss out that list of target reach and safety schools is our college compare feature. So the student can compare up to five schools side by side, so they can select colleges from their list. They can, if, if they don't have the college that they'd like to look at on their list, they can just search by college name. They can plug that in. They, I always keep all of these factors uh, checked off here, these pieces of criteria, because we want to look at all of them side by side. And then the student can actually set preferences. So in order for them to set preferences, they just click their preferences here, and then they can select from all of these pieces of criteria. And that's, I encourage students to do that because what will happen is the preferences will be, um, will show in the comparison. So let me let me show you how that works. Um, so the student can set their preferences and then once they do that, they can show their comparison. So I'm going to access a comparison that we've already saved here. So let's see what this last one is. I'm just going to click on show comparison. Now, and that one doesn't happen to have the preferences. So let's look at another one here. Let's um, let's look at let's look at this first one. I think this one must have some preferences that we saved. All right, yes. So as you can see here, we have five schools going across the top that we've selected, and then the criteria is going down the left side here. So if a box is shaded red, it means that based on the preferences, which are in blue, it's not an exact match. So just using Let's see, let's use the GPA as an example here. So the student set their, their preferences, GPA, between a 3 and a 3.5. Now we're seeing that this school here and this school, which let's scroll up to see, UMass Lowell and Florida Gulf Coast University, their GPA requirements are a little bit higher than the, the students three, between 3 and 3.5. So this, these schools may be more of a reach school than a target school for this student. Whereas these three schools, so the others, um, Wentworth Institute of Technology, Central Washington University, and Framingham State, fall right in line. So those schools may be more of a, of a, of a target school for the student. So, so many different options, so many different combinations that the student can, you know, they can take if they wanted to take UMass Lowell out and add a different school in there, since UMass Lowell may be, may be more of a, a reach school for them. So this is a great way for the student to, to help them assess and decide the schools that they're actually going to apply to. So that's the college comparison. Our standardized test page here is, is, a, is a great informational page. If we were to click on uh, SAT, practice the SAT, this would bring us out to the College Board site. So there's some information, and it leads us to some external websites. And then we have our uh, Manage Applications feature here. So this is currently um, used to request letters of recommendation and request transcripts, uh, and the student can add all, schools that they are applying to or have applied to within the application manager. It's a great tool 
on the educator side because the school can see, the educator can see the colleges that the student has applied to, and then they will get an alert if the st student needs a transcript or a letter of recommendation. Um, this will change, this, uh, this feature here, it will change. Uh, we have um, solidified uh, a contract with the Common App, and we're really excited about that. Uh, so for the, the 1920 college uh, application cycle, we will have Common App integrated within our, our platform here. So more to come on that. So the application manager will change drastically um, within you know the next you know by by the fall. So stay tuned for that. We're really excited. All right, and last but not least, we have the pay for college features. Uh, so under this main tab, we have a number of uh, a number of tools that students can use. Uh, we have um, this is our overview page, of course. Uh, the financial aid page has some great information on financial aid. So check that out. Uh, I want I'd like to show you the college cost calculator first. So the college cost calculator is a great resource to use when the student has actually started receiving their uh, admittance letters and their financial aid award letters. So the student can come in and add a college to this page here and add in, take their financial aid award letter, have it right in front of them and add in scholarships, grants, work study. Um, when they add a school in, the tuition and fees, room and board will automatically be connected because we have that information in the site from Peterson's. And then the student can add in just as an average of what they may pay for books and supplies, um, health insurance, extra expenses. They can just give a you know, give a, uh, an estimation on that. And then once the numbers are added into this, on, onto the page, the, the system will calculate out uh, annual costs and then annual awards and then come out with the cost gap. So the cost gap is what is left over. And then the estimated to total cost gap is based upon four years of school. So this resource is a great way, it's a, helpful, it's a helpful tool for students to make an informed decision of where they're actually going to attend school, where they're going to send that deposit in for May 1st. So just using, um, you know, let's use Bridgewater State University as an example. Okay, so the student got their, their award letter, they put in their, their, their awards, they have their costs, we have their annual cost gap and the estimated total cost gap is, let's just call it $30,000. So we're going to bring that $30,000, you know, so maybe the student has said, all right, I, I, I called the, you know, I, I, I called the financial aid office. Uh, I'm going to get on a, on a payment plan for, you know, $200 a month. You know, they can maybe take that out of there or maybe they added that into that college cost calculator, you know, so we're not promoting loans necessarily, but we want students to be educated about what taking a loan out entails. So let's use that $30,000 as a base. So that, that would be based upon four years because at Bridgewater State, they were just a little, a little over 7,000. So let's use 30,000 as the loan amount. We're looking at the average interest rate, which we're, they're telling us is 5%. And then let's take, just to start off, let's look at taking 15 years to repay that loan. So based on our loan amount, our interest rate, and our years to repay, we're looking at a monthly loan payment of a little over $237. And then after 15 years, we've taken on a loan for $30,000 initially, but we're going to end up paying over 42,000 because almost 13,000 will be interest. So let's say, all right, let's go back. Let's look at taking 10 years to repay this loan and let's see how the numbers change. So now our monthly loan payment has gone up a little bit, but 
in the end, we're saving, you know, we're saving a number, what was that, $4,000 maybe in interest. So it's a great way for students to, to we hear so much about student debt and, and, and with loans, and we just want to really make students aware of what they're getting involved with. So now we see this, um, we can go a little further here, we see this monthly student loan payment of just a little over $300, and we're saying, okay, this student is looking at a career in graphic design. So we plugged in graphic design, it pulls in the projected annual salary based off of ONET, and now we're gonna calculate out the affordability of that loan. So based on our monthly loan payment and a projected salary, we estimate that the financial stress is is low. So this is again a great you know maybe the student wants to mess around a little bit with the career choice and see how that affects the stress level. All right. So from here we 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 really promote the scholarships um, it's 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 really unfortunate that there are so many scholarships out there that do not get awarded each year because students aren't applying to them. And it is kind of a, a overwhelming maybe and, and daunting task to apply for scholarships because there are so many out there and it's like, where do you even start? So we have, we offer this scholarship search tool to try to make it a little bit easier for students. Uh, and so this works similarly to the college search. Uh, the educator, if they're an affiliate school, has um, can add local scholarships on their end. So through the counselor portal, the, stu the, the, the educator can add any local scholarships that they would like to the students to, to view. And that is that connects with the student view here. So here we have, an, um, we have four or five maybe a, little, a couple more, uh, local scholarships that this school has added for the students to view. Our national database here has just under 5,700 scholarships, and all of the information on the scholarships in the national database comes from Peterson's as well. So as I said, this works similarly to the college search. You can put in your type of award, um, area of study, state of residence. So let's, let's just put mass in here just to show you how it works. Uh, you know, there, there is a number of different pieces of criteria that you can search by. So you, know, you could say, oh, my, you know, my parent is in the Navy. What, what options do I have now? Oh, we don't have any. Okay, that wasn't a good one. Let's say, um, let's say, maybe go for the Army. Oh, it's not, not giving us any. All right, well, so that wasn't a good, that wasn't a good, um, piece of criteria to put in. Let's stick with mass. So we have 60 scholarships. And just to show you how it how it works, we'll just click on this first one. We'll have our details page. We'll see, get some general information at the top. Description, eligibility, and then how to apply. Uh, a lot of times there'll be a, a, a link to a website. This one doesn't happen to have one. So then from here, they can the student can look at other scholarships like this. So more importantly, they can start saving a scholarship that they would like to apply to to their scholarships scholarship list. And so once they save a scholarship to their list, they can make sure they're not missing a deadline. They can update the status. They can, you know, if they've received the award, they can say, all right, I received the award. I received $2,000 and add that here. And again, this is viewable from the educator side as well. So this is a great way for students to organize and manage and not miss a deadline for their scholarships. All right. So I think that about does it. I, that's a, you know, kind of the, the, um, a very quick kind of a, uh, overview of the features that we offer. Uh, we are always enhancing the portal so they'll, you, you may log into this a month from now and see some different things. Um, that's one of the one of the the great pieces of having a MIFA pathway that is that it it isn't stagnant. It's always changing. So I will leave my contact information on the screen here for a few minutes. 
And if you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly. If you are associated with a school that is interested in implementing NEFA Pathway, please do not hesitate to get in touch. This is a free resource that NEFA offers. There's no hitch. There's no glitch. There's, <laughs> there's just uh, as an extension of uh, all of the great resource we great resources we offer at MIFA. This is just another uh, way for us to support uh, families, students, and educators uh, with college and career planning. So thank you so much for joining today and have a good one. I'll keep this up for a couple minutes. Okay, take care. Thank uh -huh.